profession in the industry, um, there's a lot of different myths or you know folklore and this and that. Your grandparents tell you something, and the parents tell you one thing, and so forth, and things of that nature. I, I see a lot of Hispanic, I see a lot of Asian, and so forth. And one thing that the parents always says is, you know, don't play too much video games or don't watch TV too much. Your eyes can get bad. Or if you start wearing glasses, you're gonna go blind for the rest of your life and things of that nature. <laughs> My thing that I ask parents is this, so, you know, if it is true that your eyes get worse when you play video games or you watch TV too much and things of that nature, why is it that a newborn baby, first day of life, can't see? Why is it that the child needs glasses? Was it because mommy was playing too much video game when she was pregnant? So that usually kind of helps with the conversation and open things up. But in reality, the reason why a person cannot see is basically just anatomy. So when you're born, as you develop, as you grow taller, your feet gets bigger, right? Your eyes gonna grow, your, your hands and feet grow and so forth. So everything in vision is based off of anatomical structure. So if your eyes grow too long, you end up with a condition called myopia, which is can't see too far, you can only see up close. It's that simple. So it, that's all there is to vision. Now, if your eyes is not shaped brown and it's more pointy, that's what's called astigmatism. Okay, so in, in vision is, is nothing more than that. And that's why LASIK work, right? LASIK is basically a surgical procedure that remove tissue and make your eyes shorter, okay? If your eyes were bad because you watch TV, then how does LASIK work? How does something that removes tissue actually re improve your vision? So in, in vision, that's all there is. You know, parents and grandparents may say, like I said, you know, um, too much video games and whatnot and so forth. The other thing that, that parents believe is if you wear glasses, it makes your eyes worse. Just like when you wear shoes. If you wear shoes, your feet are gonna still get bigger over the years. If you don't wear shoes, your feet are gonna still grow. It doesn't matter. Glasses do not touch the eyes. So when you wear glasses, it improves your vision. It doesn't change how fast or how slow the eyes grow, okay? So I figured I'd start off with that. That way everyone's kind of on the same page, uh, I guess on the 10 page with things. Uh, second thing that most patients don't realize is the damaging effect of UV radiation. So sunlight is, is a big thing in our profession. Uh, you know, you have SPF 15, 30, 45, 60, and so forth. Every one of us knows that when we're outside, we're supposed to use sunblock or suntan lotion and so forth, right? The, that's supposed to protect your skin so you don't get the aging effect, you don't get the UV damage, and so forth. Keep in mind, suntan lotion does not work on the eyes. <laughs> that's why sunglasses are. That's why sunglasses are designed for that purpose. Now, and not all sunglasses are the same either. You know, they don't come with an SPF 15, 30, 45, 60, on and so forth. Uh, you can buy sunglasses pretty much anywhere in the mall, you know, Sunglass Hut, this and that, private office and so forth. But keep in mind what makes a sun, pair of sunglasses unique or, or special is you need to have two things. It has to be in a polycarbonate material so that it doesn't shatter into pieces when you're wearing it and you're driving and the airbag goes off in your face and so forth. And the next thing is it has to be UV protected. So UV protection is not dependent on how dark the pair of sunglasses is. Even my clear glasses are 100% UV protected because it's in the material that has UV protection. It does not need to be dark at all. Okay, so that's the other thing that uh, kind of a lot of folks usually ask about. Now, why is UV protection important? Basically, just like how sun da the UV radiation damages your skin, it can damage everything on your eye and in your eye. So, and in medicine, we use terminology described for location of damage. So. If UV damages the outer part of your eye, the white part, that's called a pinguicula. Now, I know someone in this room, because I recently spoke to her, actually understand a lot of this stuff, because she brought her daughter in recently, so we won't name any names. But... <laughs> I didn't say any but names. White fingers. <laughs> but what surprised me, as I said, you know, and I thought she was in the health profession as well, so as we were talking and so forth, her knowledge of, the, of, of you know, uh, eye care is, is impeccable. So I, just, I was going to switch seat with her and have her do the exam. But, <laughs> but so if, if sun damages occur on the white part or the outer part of the eye, that's called a pinguicula. Now, when that damage progresses and gets onto the color part of the eye or the cornea, which is in front of the iris, that's called a trisium. That's when medical insurance or health insurance will then pay for the removal of that. 
So that's the unfortunate, an unfortunate thing because now it affects your vision. Now, if sun damages internal parts of the eye, that's called a cataract. Sun damages further part, in, more internal in, inside the eye, that's called macular degeneration. So it's that simple. So everything boils down to your exposure uh, to sunlight. And I have patients come in and say, I didn't even go outside, outside that much. I'm like, well, how did you get here? Well, got in your car, drove here. So same thing, you know, every time you go get gas, every time you go shopping, or every time you do anything at all, as soon as you step outside, your exposure to sunlight is there. Even if you're sitting in your office by the window, you know, light's still coming in. So keep that in mind. UV protection is, is, is very important. It's gotten to the point where Congress had a vote on a bill that will fund, I think, I can't remember what's the last number, I think it was about $250 million just to do public awareness just to put more public you know, education out there about UV protection and things of that nature. So uh, keep that in mind, say so when you're outside, you, know, you don't wanna wear sunglasses, that's fine, just wear a visor, wear a hat, do what you need to do to make sure the eyes are protected. Because I know every one of you, you know, use suntan, or at least it's supposed to say use suntan, sunblock for your skin, but the eyes, there's only two of it, okay? If you don't protect it, eventually, you're gonna lose one or both of them. Okay, and that's the goal, to make sure that uh, you can still see as well as you can up until the dude upstairs calls you up. And after that, we're, we're not responsible anymore. <laughs> Fair enough? So Questions about anything? Dude. Yes. <laughs> well, I've actually heard that non-polarized sunglasses are worse for you than just um, not wearing sunglasses at all because you keep your eyes as open as possible and the light just keeps hitting you. Uh, polarized is just the way they... It, it, a tint is just a black coating on the sunglass. Polarizes in the matrix of the lens, and it, it's kind of like a picket fence kind of theory where everything in the, uh, in the sunglass is vertical column, so it minimizes scattered light. Now, you have clear polycarbonate lenses, 100% UV protection, polarized sunglasses are UV protection. Uh, the only thing that's different is it just minimizes scattered light. You can see things better, but that doesn't change the UV protection at all. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Someone told me that if you get LASIK, you can't have cataracts. No. Uh, LASIK is the cornea of the front part of your eye. It's just removed tissue and it's shortened it. So in essence, your eyes are shorter. Cataracts is the internal portion, portion of the eye, where it's the focusing part of the eye. Um, the sun will damage that irregardless, unless you put like a shade over your eye. 24-7. Otherwise, you, every one of us, if you're over 40, you're going to have a certain amount of cataract. Now, it's just a matter of how fast you progress to the point where you need surgery. But, but so yes. no means no, that's not true? Yes, that's not true. Okay. Except on Mars, I think. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you've had LASIK, are you more susceptible to UV damage? No. Uh, like I said, LASIK is just a surgical, surgical procedure. Uh, UV damage will occur no matter what unless you protect your eyes. Okay. Uh, Sally. Um, are there any, have they improved the procedures to remove floaters? <laughs> floaters are a unique thing. Internally, inside the eye, uh, there are substances that when we're born, some folks, it moves around more than others. So floaters are stuff you see because of different block spots that appear. Now, um, Procedure for that is a uh, vitrectomy, meaning they actually cut the eyeball up, put a little vacuum in, suck all that stuff out. Now, uh, so the procedure itself is more harmful than it is just to leave them in there unless it's really, really big. Uh, science has gotten to the point where they're doing a cineresis, meaning they're injecting a little substance inside that kind of will eat away at all that stuff. And that's uh, what's called pharmacological uh, vitrectomy. Uh, it is progressing. The verdict is promising. So, um, and I think you're working with a doctor that kind of is, is spearheading that. So, yes. Um, yes, ma'am. What kind of surgery do you do? I don't. Now, I don't do any surgery because I'm not big on blood. So, I was actually. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. Uh, <laughs> I was, now, I was on my way to medical school. I wanted to be a radiologist. Those are dudes that, you know, sit in the basement all day and they just re look at x-rays. Uh, they make about $450,000 a year. I'm like, that's pretty good. You don't have to deal with any angry, pe you know, people. No one's yelling at you, this and that, and so forth. 
But it, it takes four year med school, three year residency, but not two year uh, internship. That's after your four year undergraduate. I'm like 13 years more of my life. By the time I see my first patient, my hair would be so gray it wouldn't be funny. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> Certain medical profession like podiatry or chiropractic care, dentistry, pharmacy, uh, optometry, they're four-year program because they're specialized only. So the way I think of it is you have a family doctor. They do everything head to toe. If you have a heart problem, they send you the heart specialist. They take all the issues and so forth with the heart, and that's called a cardiologist. So I'm the family doctor related to everything with your eyes, whether it be an eye infection, trauma, injuries, things of that nature, glasses and so forth. I do everything that I need to do. Now we can treat glaucoma and so forth. The only thing we don't do is we don't remove anything. So we don't do any kind of surgery. Unless it's minor surgery, then we can. I have the ability to do that in the office, but if you come in with a little, you know, pencil sticking in your eye, oh. uh, we kind of send you out for that, and that's the, the eye surgeon, they're the ophthalmologist. Yeah. Funny thing is, like, I had a patient called 2 o'clock in the morning. She said, yeah, my brother was doing some wood, uh, woodwork, you know, and one of the pieces missing, and he thinks it's in his eye. Can you come in and see him? I'm like, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, it's probably better that he goes in the emergency room, because I don't have any uh, anesthetic in the office. So she said, Good point. There you go. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to quit sure people know that you can also see children. Yes. Oh, thank you. My little seven year old had his eyes examined yes. and okay. uh, I really enjoyed what he, what he did. Well, right thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we, said, we see kids as young as six months old and as, older, as old as over 100. So Now, if they're under six, I don't personally see them. I have a pediatric or kid doctor a specialist in the office. Uh, she, she also teaches at the school as well. Uh, my theory behind it is if they can throw up on me, I usually have somebody else see them. It works better that way. Not, not big on vomit. Not big there you go. Oh, okay. it just works so <laughs> well. Yes, sir. No, no, don't get me wrong. I love kids. I love kids. It's just, you know, if they can throw yeah, if they went in a certain distance and they can throw up on me, then, you know, I, I usually try not to. But, yes. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you.